Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on laptop communications. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the requirements from our essentials exam, 220-701, section 1.10, where we need to look at communication connections on these laptop components. So we're going to go through what Bluetooth is, infrared connections, cellular WAN, Ethernet, and modem connections that you can use on your laptops and be mobile and portable wherever you go. Let's talk first about a very popular mobile technology called Bluetooth. It's appropriate usually to call this a personal area network, a PAN. Bluetooth is something that is only able to use on very small distances. I might be able to go 20 feet away to be able to use Bluetooth. But once you get farther away, the Bluetooth signal rapidly degrades and you're not able to use that Bluetooth signal. So we tend to call it a personal area network. What we really created Bluetooth for was to replace a lot of wires that we had. You see a lot of people with uh, earpieces like this one that's on the screen where we used to have a wire that went up to our head. Now we can have something that's completely wireless. So we can concentrate on driving, concentrate on talking or walking or whatever we're doing without getting tangled up with a lot of wires. And since we always know we're going to be close to our phone, using Bluetooth, this personal area network, was a great way to do that. The speeds on Bluetooth these days tend to be something relatively slow, which makes sense. We were replacing those slower serial type connections or those slow or wired type connections, one megabit through three megabits per second tends to be what we can use. Now, Bluetooth is also used for other things. It's used for keyboards. It's used for mice. It's used to be able to transfer files. There's a lot of functionality to Bluetooth. So you may not just see it for people that are using earpieces. You might also see it being used for other things that would be personal type use. When you're using your mouse or keyboard, get rid of those wires. Just use Bluetooth connectivity to connect from your laptop to those peripheral devices. Another method of communicating using laptops or portable devices is infrared technology. This may be something that's built into your printers or your laptop. You may not even realize the infrared capability is there. There is a limitation to infrared and something you have to keep in mind with setting them up, and that's that infrared is a line of sight, a direct line of sight. This is the same technology that's used in a television remote control. The vast majority of remote controls are using infrared. And so if you have infrared in your environment and you're using it, then you need to be sure that it's direct line of sight. If somebody stands in the middle or there's something in the middle, then you're not going to be able to use that infrared. This is a standard that was created by an organization called the Infrared Data Association, or IRDA. So sometimes you'll see that referenced on the device itself. It may have a small setting or there may be a small window on it. And it may actually have the words IRDA to say that this is an infrared port. It used to be relatively common. You'd see it on almost all new laptops, all PDAs that came out. All of our phones, our printers started to use infrared. And there's still a number of those that do it. There's an infrared port right on the front of this HP printer, for instance. And you could have an infrared uh, capabilities on your laptop or plug in a USB expansion for infrared to be able to print to that particular printer. You don't see them much anymore. They're becoming a lot less common than they used to be. But the capabilities, especially on our legacy devices, are still there. And it's still very functional. It's just that these days, we're doing more just with 802.11 wireless. So that's the way we're communicating to our printers today, is we've replaced that infrared with something that goes a lot longer distance. And it's not susceptible to some of those line of sight problems that we were looking at earlier. There are still uses for infrared, especially in specialized environments where there is not a, a capability to use wireless. Maybe it does need to be something that's a much uh, more reliable connection between two devices that can't be interrupted by something else. You see this a lot for thermal printers uh, when you're working with them in other environments. And some manufacturing facilities are still using infrared. So don't discount it completely. You may still run across a few of those. It's just becoming a lot less common than it used to be. One of the largest growth markets for communication with portable devices and laptops tends to be mobile broadband. You see this written as that cellular WAN technology as it was written in the CompTIA requirements. I gave it a more generic name of mobile broadband because that's really what it is. It allows us to be very mobile and to use many different frequencies to be able to do that. It allows us to really get internet access from practically anywhere. If there is a mobile type connection, a cellular phone works, a mobile phone device works, then these devices will work. And it's very, very functional. 
you can take something like this Verizon Wireless MiFi device, turn it on, and now it's a mobile MiFi wireless connection. I can use any of my 802.11 devices to communicate out over that particular link. It is, uh, we call it an emerging technology, but it's coming a lot more popular, becoming so popular, almost everybody who has a need to be mobile has one of these kinds of devices. If you go to an airport, practically everybody with a laptop has this type of device, and more and more people are starting to use them. The speeds you get from these are going to be dependent on the technology that's in use and perhaps your mobile carrier, where you happen to be geographically. If you have Verizon, you might have great speed in one city, but not in another. If you have Sprint, it may be exactly the reverse. And the standards are really rapidly changing. We're having faster and faster speeds with these mobile broadbands. I have an associate that has one of these from Sprint that has up to eight megabit per second download. It's almost like being on a cable modem faster than a DSL line, and it's all wireless these days. So rapidly changing, rapidly updating, certainly a technology we're going to see more and more from as the years go by. If our mobile broadband is the latest and greatest, the one that is falling rapidly by the wayside is this modem technology. This modem, of course, stands for modulator and demodulator, where it's converting these digital signals we have into something analog, something that we can hear and send across a telephone line. This is a pretty old Zircom modem you would plug into a legacy PCMCIA laptop, and it has links here to plug in not just modem connections, but allowed us Ethernet connections. This was before we had built-in Ethernet on some of our laptops. You need a modem on both sides to be able to make this work, something on the other side that will take those sounds and convert convert them back into digital signals. And this generally works over standard phone lines. But if you've ever talked to anybody on a phone line, it's not the most crystal clear audio. And because of that, those limited frequencies provide us with limited bandwidths and able to send traffic back and forth over a modem connection. We tend to get something along the lines of a maximum of 56 kilobits per second, even in the best possible circumstances on today's modern modems. It's pretty slow, kilobits per second. We're not even talking a megabit, not even close to a megabit. Very, very slow. But if you have no capabilities for wireless, there's no mobile broadband where you happen to be, and you need to send traffic back and forth, and it may not be just a lot, little bit of traffic, just send whatever you can out over that link, that's a great way to use it. Those utility functions are still useful. And maybe it's at night. You need to bring up a line on your dial-up modem, send a tiny little bit of traffic, and hang up the connection. There's no need to pay for a mobile connection to be on all the time. We can simply use a modem to be able to do that over our standard phone lines. Let's see what we've learned with these laptop communications. Our first question is, what wireless networking technology requires a direct line of sight? There was one where we were able to do things like print to printers using infrared technology. Which wireless networking technology can be used from almost any location? Well, we were already mentioning this emerging trend to have mobile broadband so that wherever we happen to go, we've got an internet connection. And our last question, what networking technology is a good option if 802.11 or wireless broadband isn't available? Well, if you've got nothing available to you, then a modem is going to be really your only option. That is what we needed to understand for our laptop communications section 1.10. We've gone through Bluetooth, infrared, cellular WAN, Ethernet, and modem technologies. If you'd like to look through any of our CompTIA or other training videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me an email, you can visit our website at 3aplus.com.